Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. As I continue to review some holiday movies and specials, I'm just going to review a few here and there since Christmas is finally coming this week. I'm going to be reviewing a wonderful, delightful, and charming CGI animated holiday special that came out on December 11, 2009. It aired on CBS. It's called Yes, Virginia. Based upon the most famous electoricals of all time, that was a young girl named Virginia who wanted to find proof if Santa Claus is real. And he does exist. But several believers or non-believers but this was just built on a lie like this is somewhat of a childhood fantasy so that's where she started to get proof to the editor of the famous uh, newspaper called the New York Sun and it all takes place in New York City in 1897 And this famous uh, oratorical had actually had some adaptations to follow. Uh, prior to this, we had the 1974 animated classic, and that was produced by Bill Melendez. And we even have a TV movie that aired on ABC with Charles Bronson, yes, from all the Death Wish movies and westerns and other uh, films that he's done, all these action movies. Uh, joining in with Ed Asner, you know, from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, and who played Luke Grant, among others. And it had Richard Thomas from The Waltons, who played John Boyd. Yeah. So this one came out um, roughly at the time when I was still living at that old house um, we we're already getting ready for the new uh, decade, uh, you know, 2010 or 2010. Well, we know how that turned out. <laughs> so I, I somehow discovered it um, when it aired on, on CBS. Uh, I taped it at the time. And I later saw the Spanish version, too, which aired on Univision a few years later in 2012. And now I just got the DVD. I'm going to show you right up there what the cover looks like. Therefore, the DVD that I have that I bought at Goodwill recently is in one of my totes. So I'm sorry I didn't bring it out for you to see, but that's okay. But just to let you know that I do have it, you can probably find it on. My Facebook page, you know, just look under the photos and you'll see it. Because I did post it up there. You could probably check on one of my previous posts to show proof that I do have it. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Because I just also watched this uh, on a streaming device uh, called Zumo. They also have it on Budu as well for free. So if you get a chance to check it out for yourself, you'll you'll be able to. Because unfortunately it's not on CBS like, like it used to be. But it had some repeats uh, for just a few years until they decided not to. I mean it's amazing how all these Christmas specials they played on CBS, they can't even play this one. So that's a shame. You know, this needs a lot of attention. Uh, also to note that uh, this was sponsored by uh, Macy's because they actually helped produce this uh, they were sending out some merchandising for the special they had the book to follow um, they actually made a foundation for Make-A-Wish a charitable group you know they had to donate all the money and they also tried to send letters and, and all and they even did a musical too so, Macy's a part of your life, you know, 
best known for all the Thanksgiving parades that they had. And they also gave us Snoopy to join and, and all the rest of the Peanuts came. So they sell some merchandise in there as well. But yeah, they did sell the DVD and they did sell the books. Um, you can get it online if you can. So here we go. Anyway, it stars Neil Patrick Harris. And I know because I just previously reviewed 8 Bit Christmas, but I guarantee you this is much better than that. And I know he was in How to Met Your Mother and Doogie Hauser, MD. Uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, yes, from Party of Five. I know what you did last summer movies, well, the first two. And. She did the TV show The Ghost Whisperer, among others. Uh, B. Miller, or Beatrice, whatever you like to call her. Uh, Karen Patrick Campbell, Chuck Nice, you know, comedian. Andrew Cherry, Taylor Hay, Nicholas Sarisi, Julian Franco, Michael Bashimi. And Alfred Melinda, yes, from Spider-Man 2. He's also recently in the new Spider-Man called Spider-Man No Way Home. I'll check that out uh, later. Yeah, finally reprising the role as Dr. Ock. But he was also in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And he has done several movies in his career. Yeah, great actor. Yeah, it's written by Wayne Best. Matthew McDonald and Chris uh, Pahal, and it's directed by Pete Circuit. Yes, and it's based upon a true story. The special began set in New York City in 1897. We meet a young eight-year-old red-headed girl named Virginia O'Hannon, who always loves and cherishes Christmas. It's one of her favorite holidays of all time. She was just creating a Christmas pop-up book that features Santa Claus, climbing up on top of the chimney roof, delivering a huge load of gifts to all the little children in many homes, even ones around the world. Yeah, riding around in a reindeer sleigh with several reindeers on this special night, Christmas Eve, getting ready for Christmas morning for everyone to open their gifts. Also check the list twice if they're naughty or nice yeah <laughs> you know the story anyway she has a best friend Ollie who just came by to find out that Santa had arrived on the streets but it turns out to be a street bum known as Strackley Santa you know was just hanging around uh, almost right next to where the New York Sun newspaper building is at Mostly, you know, gathering some more change, you know, hoping that he'll be able to find food. Maybe he'll find enough money to find a place to stay. Who knows? Anyway, she does live with her parents. One is a doctor named Philip O'Hannon, and the other one is her mom. Laurel Hannon. So then she's greeted with all of her friends at school talking about Santa Claus which unfortunately that's what led to everyone's old question. Is there really a Santa Claus? Does he exist? That's where we had this schoolyard bully who's a rich brat named Charlotte who decided to fill all that stuff down their heads thinking that Santa Claus is not real and being a and being a mean bully that she is she goes around taking Virginia's uh, Christmas pop-up book and then later throw it directly into the mud puddle the mud puddle so because of that she's on her quest to find a lot of proof everywhere that if Santa Claus does exist. So first she had to go with Ollie 
to the local library where you meet this uh, over uh, gooly over godly uh, librarian which I know she's she's going around you know riding around on the ladder trying to find all these Christmas books that actually takes place around the world internationally so you like you spot Santa Claus in Turkey, Norway, Mexico, Spain, uh, China, but most of all the North Pole. Yeah, <laughs> I like the fact that that librarian is just totally quirky and very loud, but then she kind of shushes herself too. <laughs> Boy, some librarian. And anyway, we also meet uh, the editor, Francis Church, who works at the New York Sun newspaper. Because since it is very sad that there are non-believers and then there are believers who are trying to be able to, to find out if they do exist or not. Like if this whole thing was just a myth. Uh, Virginia tries to get all the answers from his, from her father, yeah, Philip, but all he was giving is some vague answers about if he got some milk and cookies, or the fact that she got that gift. That it's obviously that yes, that he does exist, but that's not the particular answer. He also, she also tries to answer her mom, Laura about that if Santa is real but she only gives some of the answers in that sort of way so since nothing worked out the only best solution was to have her write a letter to the editor of the New York Sun newspaper because they're the ones that can get the real facts correctly precise you know they focus on you know news headlines as well as sports politics poverty um, other um, stories of any kind yeah I and they also focus on movies and all well this was a different period so at that point on she wrote the original letter and it says quoted uh, dear editor I am eight years old. Some of my little friends say there is no Santa Claus. Papa says, in his quote, if you see it in the sun, it's so. Please tell me the truth. Is there a Santa Claus? That's all written by Virginia O'Hannon, 11-5 West 95th Street. But then Francis had refused to write the uh, the entire uh, oratorical on this newspaper to, to be printed it out and decided to throw it away because it proves that this is just a fantasy and it's not going to be told by truth and that's what let uh, Virginia so heartbroken and sad because Charlotte eventually found the letter that's been thrown away in the trash and Squiggly Santa was ready to go confront Francis about that letter just to help Virginia out. Meanwhile, she was in tears and she just yanked all the Christmas decorations in her room and threw away her book in the trash. Now feeling very sad and lonely because it's never going to be printed or, hap or ever happen. Somehow, Francis had finally see the light because he already uh, found out about the quote that's coming from Virginia's father if you see it in the sun it's so so that's where he begins to realize the truth must be told and this is where he said it it's a long one but I'm gonna do my best to say it right away because you have to find information to, to find out this actual letter but I'm going to say it on my review here. Here we go. And I know I'm going to bend over right there. Virginia, your little friends are wrong. They have been affected by the skepticism of the 
skeptical age. They do not believe except they see. They think that nothing can be which is not comprehensible by the little minds. All minds, Virginia, whenever they be men's or children's, are little. In this great universe of ours, man is a mere insect, an ant in his intellect as compared with the boundless world about him as measured by the intelligence capable of grasping the whole of the truth, whole of truth and knowledge. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. He exists as certainly as love and generosity and devotion exists, and you know that they are bound to give to your life its highest beauty and joy. Alas, how dreary would it be the world if there was no Santa Claus? It would be as dreary as there were no Virginias. There would be no childlike faith then, no, po no poetry, no romance to make tolerable this existence. We should have no enjoyment except in senses and sight. The eternal light with which childhood fills the world will be extinguished. Not believe in Santa? You might as well not believe in fairies. You might get your papa to hire a man to watch in all of the chimneys on Christmas Eve to cast Santa Claus. But even if they did not see Santa Claus coming down, what would that prove? Nobody sees Santa Claus, but that is no sign that there is no Santa Claus. Well, that is. <laughs> that is. The most real things in the world are those that neither children nor man can see. Did you ever see fairies dancing on the lawn? Of course not. But that's no proof that they are not there. Nobody can conceive or imagine all the wonders there are unseen and unseeable in the world. You may tear apart the baby rattle and see what makes the noise inside, but there is a bill covering the unseen world which not the strongest man nor even the unified strength of them all, the strongest man that ever lived, could tear apart. Only faith, fancy, poetry, love, romance can push aside the certain and views and pictures the supernal beauty and glory beyond. Is it all real? Ah, Virginia, in all this world there is nothing else real and abiding. No Santa Claus? Thank God he lives and he lives forever. A thousand years from now, Virginia, nay, ten times ten thousand years from now, he will continue to make glad the heart of childhood. And that was a powerful message that eventually became the most famous oratorical written poems of all time. And it still holds up today. So when she finally got the answer directly on the newspaper as printed it, rightly so, we finally get to meet the mysterious man himself. And that happens to be, well, Santa Claus only dressed up in regular coat and, and top hat. And he also check out his watch. You begin to see the belief meter. It's the same belief meter that actually was shown on the clock tower, which sometimes they either, if, not, if there are non-believers out there, then the meter is going to go down. But if there are going to be believers out there, then it's going to rise all the way up to the top and I'll finally stay true to our hearts and soul. So now the entire town have finally got the most respectful answer of them all, and now they have a wonderful Christmas in New York City. And that's the lesson that's learned right here, was that trust your heart and soul. There may be non-believers out there, but true believers can make things special without sounding so vague or anything. And that's what Virginia really wants in her life. And it's hard to believe because the real life Virginia went on to become a teacher. And she became very successful too.
and she has worked a lot harder than ever before. She even had a family and all, all the way until her death in 1971. And Francis Church, on the other hand, yep, he lived long until his death, but he did eventually became the most famous uh, editor of a mall from this famous uh, newspaper, New York Sun. Anyway, and it, it definitely is a true message right there, very powerful, very strong, that Santa Claus does exist in all of us. Anywhere he's around, he's always going to be there. And he's not a myth. And that's why we have in in store Santas and you know bums and even charities and everyone else. I mean, this is a tradition for the holiday spirit. But of course, he's also known as Father Christmas too. Or Chris Kringle and or any other. <laughs> Whatever you like to call him. Because he's good old Jolly Saint Nick. Yes, this is a wonderful Christmas special. If you haven't seen it, then definitely check this out. Uh, grab the DVD if you can find it. Uh, grab the book and read it. Also, um, find it out on all these streaming devices and see if they're available. It'll be worth it. Because uh, the animation is just breathtaking, very stunning, the way it was done. It was actually, believe it or not, was uh, animated by, you're going to love this, Stars Animation. Yes, that Stars, the cable network that plays uh, movies and some specials 24-7. Uh, that has all the Encore channels and all. Yes, that's Stars. Um... It's also um, joining in with Macy's uh, because they helped uh, produce it and they were selling merchandising and all. Um, I really love the voice acting. I mean, I couldn't even recognize Neil Patrick Harris, yet alone Jennifer Love Hewitt, but I did recognize uh, Alfred Molina as Francis. But for both of them as Virginia parents, though, that was really surprising. And Michael Buscemi did an excellent job as Squiggly Santa, the street bum. <laughs> and, you know, he does have a lot of heart, so he really cares for Virginia, too. Because it really shows, you know, he can really help him out. Just because, after all, Virginia did give him a gift, which was a, a Santa red coat. So that way it'll keep him warm. Because he was wearing the Santa cap too. Yeah. And you got to give them credit to uh, Beatrice uh, Miller. And I know she went on to do some voice acting in Toy Story 3. Um, she's terrific and she's wonderful, caring. You really care for this girl so much because, you know, she's trying to know that you know she loves Christmas so much and she wants to begin to find out the existence of Santa and that's all so that way everything should be believed and I hope they play this forever no matter what even if you have to find it everywhere you go <laughs> this should always be remembered by joining in with the 1974 special and the 1991 um, TV movie because this is just as memorable as all the other Christmas specials out there so definitely check this out anyway so that's yes Virginia there is a Santa Claus <laughs> and I give the special five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye